Welcome to session 15B. Tonight we are looking at part two of the geography and the bodies of water in the New Testament. Last night we looked at the geography and the bodies of water that were present in the Gospels. Tonight we're looking at the bodies of water and the geography that was present during the book of Acts. So let's go ahead and get started because we have a lot of ground to cover. Well, I guess that would be a pun, right? <laughs> anyway, bodies of water are the same in Acts as they are for the Gospels. Uh, only this time we have more of the Mediterranean Sea involved. And as you uh, might notice behind me, I have uh, drawn out our new map. The big blue right here is Mediterranean Sea. Down here you have the Nile River, and over here you have the Red Sea. So kind of keep those in mind. So we're looking at Acts, the book of Acts, when you're reading, a lot of the Mediterranean Sea is involved in Paul's journeys. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Countries and cities. Well, as we move out of the Gospels and into Acts, our geography expands from Palestine further into the Roman Empire. The country of Galatia, which is up there at the top on the right-hand side, is located in what we know as modern-day Turkey. Uh, many of you might be familiar with that name from current geography. Uh, this was where the country of Galatia was located. It was the destination of the Apostle Paul's first missionary journey. Uh, that was uh, his journey, his mission trip to take the gospel message to the Gentiles. The country of Greece, which we have moving to the center of the board, uh, is located in modern Greece. It was the destination actually for Paul's second missionary journey. The country of Asia was located on the western coast of modern Turkey. It is the destination of Paul's third missionary journey. As you can see, the Apostle Paul uh, got around quite a bit. If you remember from our last session, I talked about how Paul uh, was on the road in Damascus and had a Damascus road experience. Now, on my map, I have uh, Damascus on here where Paul had his conversion, uh, where he had prior been known as Saul. He was persecuting Christians, and he had a Damascus road experience with Jesus. Jesus saying, Paul, Paul, or Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And if you remember from the story, he was blinded for three days and ended up going into a town and meeting a man who had cured his blindness. God had spoke to him and said, you're going to do this for this guy. And uh, so he was healed and he became an ambassador for Christ and took that zealousness, that excitement, that a drive that he had and used that to spread the gospel. And if you see uh, Galatia up towards the north of where he was from Damascus and then moving over uh, this way to Greece and to Asia, this guy traveled a pretty good distance to share the gospel message. And I'm, for one, I'm very thankful for that, that he did that. Uh, we don't know, uh, it, me personally, I don't know how he traveled around. I do know he spent some time on boats, uh, which would make sense when you're traveling. Maybe uh, that was easier to get to some of these places that he went to. You would have to take a boat, uh, keeping in mind that otherwise you're pretty much walking uh, everywhere unless... Um, they have a camel or something, and I don't know that Paul would have had access to uh, animals that would uh, move him around. Well, the country of Italy, which is over on the far other side of our map, located in modern Italy, it was the country of Paul's final imprisonment and death. Wow. Think about this. Italy, where we go, where people vacation, where they make it a point to go visit Italy, where they go to Rome and they see the Vatican, that it's noted that that's where 
Paul's final imprisonment and death would occur over in Italy. Pretty interesting stuff. City of Jerusalem located in modern Jerusalem and it is the beginning of the early Christian church. Now on our map here Jerusalem being right over here at the bottom down here just below Caesarea uh, just as a reminder this is the Nile and this fun looking thing which kind of looks like a hand is the Red Sea and we read about the Red Sea in the Exodus era all right, city of Damascus, uh, located in modern Damascus, and we still hear that name today. As a matter of fact, I heard it on the radio earlier today, talking about Damascus, is in the modern country of Syria. It was Paul's destination where he was temporarily blinded by Jesus and converted to Christianity. And as you know, Syria is a hot topic right now uh, on the news. Uh, Damascus those places are still in existence today as we know and they were back then the city of Caesarea which is located on the Mediterranean coast just south of the Sea of Galilee it was the site of Paul's trials right then we have the city of Antioch on the Mediterranean coast north of Israel near modern Turkey it was the beginning point for all three of Paul's missionary journeys I would also note that uh, the first church came out of Antioch the first Christian church came out of Antioch and then you have the city of Rome it was the political and cultural heart of the Roman Empire so you could see that our story uh, from the Old Testament going into the New goes this direction. Uh, the Gospel makes its way that way. You know, when Jesus was over here in this area and told the disciples, go into all the earth, go into Judea and, and Samaria and, and all the places and preach the Gospel, the disciples, the Apostle Paul and others that traveled with Paul did just that they went and spread the gospel message and uh, I don't know about you but I'm very thankful that they did because eventually it made it over here to the United States and uh, we're all sitting here today as a result of that all right now let's move over to the historical books of the New Testament you know having mastered the geography of the New Testament we're now ready to continue the story of the Bible with three main eras that we're going to go through uh, in other sessions. You'll recall that we have 27 books of the New Testament that can be divided into three different kinds of books. You've got five historical books, which are uh, the Gospels plus Acts. You have 13 Pauline epistles. And I always ask, out of the 13 Pauline epistles, how many of those letters were written to churches? nine and which would leave four to individuals and then you have nine general epistles and remember this is a overview of the Bible you can get into a lot more detail uh, on each of those books now as we did in the uh, with the historical books in the Old Testament we usually do an overview of the events of the uh, different types of books and that's what we'll do here the three main eras of the New Testament okay are the Gospels the church and missions and those are ones that we'll look at in detail Gospels uh, basically tells the life of Jesus of Nazareth as told in the Gospels Matthew Mark Luke and John when you read those you're reading about Jesus life now if you want to read about uh, Jesus being foretold and he was prophesied that the Messiah was going to come uh, the Old Testament I think I heard today as a matter of fact uh, James McDonald was talking today that there were no less than 50 references to a coming Messiah throughout the Old Testament and that the um, Bible there was significant proof 
for the Bible. And one of the, uh, while I'm on this, one of the interesting things that he said today is that the Bible has been the most um, highly disputed book of all time. And his point was that Satan is doing everything he possibly can to discredit the Bible. He has not wasted any time on trying to discredit other books as much as he has tried to discredit the Bible, which gives you some, um, I know it gives me confidence in that the Bible is true because uh, when the enemy is trying to come at it with everything he has, that tells you something. That tells you something. And so he has tried for thousands of years to discredit uh, God and to discredit the Bible and uh, ha has not wasted his time trying to discredit other books uh, mm -hmm. that are out there. And quite honestly, uh, the Bible has uh, managed to survive and it has been printed millions and millions of times uh, over any other book that uh, we know of. So uh, reading it, I get a sense of comfort from knowing that. The church, which is the second main era that we would talk about in the New Testament, is the formation of the Christian church. And then finally, missions, which is the expansion of the church into the Roman Empire through missions. All right. Now, looking at the three central figures of the New Testament, you know, we just talked about the central or the main eras. You've had gospels, church, and missions. Now, looking at these central figures of the New Testament, for the gospels, you have Jesus. I mean, hands down, he's the central figure. He is the predicted Messiah. As I mentioned a few seconds ago, uh, looking in the Old Testament and all the times that Jesus was prophesied about. Now, granted, it doesn't say his actual name, but it talks about, uh, I think, of Isaiah 7, uh, 14, I believe, where it talks about, and the virgin will give birth to a son, and the, um, he will come and rule. And um, you can look up that passage for detail, but there are uh, multiple references uh, prophesying about uh, the coming of a savior of a king. And then uh, lastly, let's see, well, not lastly, but the second one, the church, the central figure is Peter. He was the leader of the early church. Now, when I think of Peter, the first thing I always think of is this is a guy who denied Christ three times, right? And the croaster, and the croaster, <laughs> and the rooster crowed, and the croaster roosted. You know, the rooster crowed, right? Jesus had told Peter, you're going to deny me, and the rooster is going to crow. And sure enough, he did. But on Peter, Jesus builds his church. He says, on this rock, I will build my church. And remember when Jesus came back after he was, after he was um, resurrected, before he ascended into heaven, and he asked Peter, right, Peter, do you love me? And Peter's like, Lord, you know I do. He's like, no, then then do this. And then the second time, Peter, do you love me? He's like, Lord, you know I do. Then do this. You know, and then a third time, Peter, do you love me? And he's like, Lord, really? I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but like, really? He's like, you know I do. Then do this. You know, isn't it wonderful that here's a guy who who walked around and saw what Jesus did for three years. And then when it came time, you know, when Jesus was led away to the cross, Peter denied knowing him three times. The rooster crows. Christ dies on the cross. He resurrects from the dead. He sees Peter and he gives him another chance. And he makes him the leader of the church. Peter, also known as Rock. On this rock I will build my 
church and Peter who ends up uh, witnessing and sharing the gospel after Christ ascends into heaven writes two books in the New Testament first and second Peter and just it's that grace that love you know that Christ had for him that he also has for us it's amazing it's amazing stuff and then missions uh, the central figure being Paul who was the first Christian missionary the, this guy who was on the road to Damascus out to persecute Christians and this guy becomes the first Christian missionary you see how God takes somebody and can use somebody we can be used also by the Lord he wants to use us to spread his message so just a uh, small review the Gospels the church and the missions are the three main eras that we would look at this time for the New Testament and your central figures Jesus Peter and Paul I always love to go Peter Paul and Mary um, but Jesus being the predicted Messiah Peter being the leader of the early church and Paul being the first Christian missionary now the locations uh, for the gospel for Jesus uh, it includes the Roman provinces of Galilee Samaria and Judah uh, the general land area that was that was known as Canaan and Israel in the Old Testament is commonly known as Palestine in the New Testament and it included those Roman provinces that I mentioned um, then the location for uh, the church for Peter is Jerusalem the ancient city of Jerusalem has been in the same location throughout most of biblical history after the kingdom era it is the city that gave birth to the early church it is a city that still exists today all these years and then of course you have missions era with Paul being the main figure and the location being the Roman Empire as Paul spread the message of Christianity he took it to the heart of the Roman Empire uh, from Palestine north into what is modern Turkey and west through Greece to Italy um, just amazing just amazing all right well that concludes tonight's session on the geography and the bodies of water uh, in the uh, book of Acts you know Acts being written by uh, Luke uh, you had Matthew Mark Luke and John Luke wrote Luke of course and then he followed up with Acts uh, and that's a fascinating book and talks about Paul uh, Paul's conversion it talks about and here's the other really cool thing that I like about uh, Paul and uh, the book of Acts is you'll read about him and Barnabas um, getting together and going on a missionary journey and them taking John a guy named John Mark a younger guy named John Mark who was related uh, to Barnabas they took him and John Mark uh, he goes back home during the first trip um, some some people joke and say he went back home to his mommy because he couldn't handle handle it but uh, either way he goes back home uh, Paul and Barnabas go back after they're done with their first missionary journey talk about let's go on a second missionary journey and uh, Barnabas wants to take John Mark again now John Mark is the same Mark who wrote the gospel Mark just so you know so uh, Barnabas wants to take him and Paul's like no we're not taking him he he ditched us the first time so we're not taking him again and they have a sharp disagreement and they have they they have such a disagreement that they split and what's amazing to me about that is that if Paul and Barnabas just thinking about this the the disagreement that they had caused them to split and go in different directions and the gospel went further as a result of that because uh, Paul I believe took uh, Silas with him and Barnabas 
took John Mark with him and they went in different directions to go spread the gospel. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And, and John Mark, who is Mark, ends up writing uh, one of the gospels about the things that he saw. We had studied uh, Mark through uh, Lisa Harper's study, the Gospel of Mark. Really good study. If you haven't had a chance to take that, I encourage you to. It's really good. Uh, she brings up a lot of great points about uh, the book of Mark. Mark, Mark um, is usually known for like quick, boom, boom, boom. And his, he, he hits things fast. He's not, to me, he's not a fluffy writer. He's, he's a quick writer, hits them fast. So, but, you know, reading about that in Acts is, is pretty cool when you, it, I hated to see that they had a disagreement like that, but as a result of that, the gospel message uh, went in two different directions and reached some more people. So, you know, the Lord always works good out of everything. So, um, but anyway, that was a little... I don't know, you want to call it a rabbit trail or whatever, but I just thought it was cool. When you talk about the book of Acts, it's really neat, a uh, really neat book to read. A lot of great stuff in there. So I encourage you to check it out for yourself. Well, folks, I'm going to close this in prayer and then say good night. Father, we just thank you for bringing us together. And I just thank you, Lord, for those that watch this video. And I pray, Father, that they would get something out of it, that it would be encouraging to them and that they wouldn't feel um, uh, ill-equipped to read the Bible. Sometimes it feels overwhelming or it can feel intimidating. But God, I just pray that through these video sessions that that would help ease uh, some people's anxieties about that. And it would be fun to read to them. So Lord, we just thank you. And I love you. I thank you for the blessings that you've given us. I ask, you, Lord, that you would forgive us our sin. Forgive us where we failed you. And help us to start brand new. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, folks, uh, thank you for watching. And if you enjoy these videos, please share them with a friend. All right. Oh, and family, too. I'd share them with family, too. So, all right. You take care. Bye-bye now.